Well, hello, friends. It is so good again to see you this week. Thank you so much for joining me, Pastor Zach, for this week's children's sermon. I hope you're doing well in this first full week of Lent that we've had since last Wednesday, right? It was Ash Wednesday. We talked about that weird-looking cross that we put on our foreheads. I hope you've had a week full of laughter and learning and all good things. As always, I want you to find that comfortable spot inside or outside your house. And then when you get there, let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out together. Ready? One, two, three, in. And we're going to hold it. And we just do that each week to still our hearts and our minds and our bodies so that we can hear God's word. And we can give glory to God for filling our lungs with the breath of life. So then we can share good news and love with those that we meet and also back with God. So have you ever stood in line before? Yeah. Now, if there's been a long line, <clears throat> let's say at the zoo or maybe at an amusement park. Have you ever wanted to cut in line? Try to figure out how to get to the very front? I know I have. Because we don't like waiting, right? We want to be first. We want to be the first ones to do something. Or we at least want to have the joy and excitement now. Now, I know you've all been to school or you've been in places where maybe there was a line leader. Maybe it was a teacher or it was somebody's assigned job, right? And to be a line leader means you lead the line. That means you're the first person and you generally go to a certain destination, right? So whether that's going from, uh, from English class or related arts to then gym class, or maybe it's going from math to let's say lunch, Right, there are times where we have to move throughout the day and we have to follow somebody to get there. And we especially follow, right, when we're not familiar with the area. Maybe we don't know how to get from math to lunch. Maybe we're new, right, and we have to follow somebody to get there. Now, if you were a line leader, I know I loved being line leader, right? Because you're first. It's awesome. You get So then when you get there, you get the first choice of everything. So when you're line leader and somebody wants to take your job from you, right? And they, and they try to cut in line. Does that get you a little bit upset? Maybe just a little bit? That's right, because someone is stealing your job. Someone is not following the rules. Somebody's not listening. Well, I want to read you a story from the Bible about following the line leader and how Peter doesn't do that. So I'm going to read this from Mark's gospel, chapter eight, and then we're going to talk about it, okay? So then it goes like this. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. So we obviously don't hear about Jesus and Peter going to school, going from math to lunch. But we hear that Jesus says, get behind me, Peter. He says, get behind me because Jesus has just told his disciples that there are things that are going to happen. That on this way to the cross, right right there, during this Lenten journey, on the way to the cross, that Jesus will unfortunately be hurt. 
and he's going to die. But then three days later, he's going to rise again. But Peter didn't want to lose his best friend, right? Peter would be confused. It would be a new thing. And Peter says, I don't like that, Jesus. No, you're not allowed to do that. And Jesus says, Peter, I have to get behind me. You can't tell me what to do. I, I'm God and I know what I'm going to do. Right? Jesus is our line leader, right? We follow Jesus to the cross, through the cross, and into this new life that God has in store for us. And notice how he says, if any want to become my followers, right? When we, when we become Christians, when we say, we love this Jesus guy, we become followers of Jesus. That means we are not number one, right? If we're following somebody, that means we actually aren't the line leader. And we can't cut in front of the line leader because then we would be lost. We wouldn't know what to do, but we follow Jesus in order to make sure that we can see clearly, that we can think clearly, that we can act in loving ways. For those who want to lose their life, right, who want to give their life to Jesus, those are the ones who will have this reward of following and being a disciple. Someone who is marked with the cross of Christ, the exact same cross we marked last week at Ash Wednesday. A reminder that God is with us at all times because in Jesus, that's literally what his name means. God is with us, Emmanuel. And Jesus is teaching and healing and trying to show us the way of what a life of following God looks like. Because Jesus is following his Father's will and we are following God's will. Jesus and, and the Father and the Holy Spirit all together connected. When we jump the line and we try to get to the front to make it easier or to experience something new, bad things can happen. And sometimes Jesus gets upset with us. That's why it's important that we always follow in this way of love. Because when we try to <clears throat> go around Jesus, that's when we start doing mean things and bad things and things that Jesus wouldn't want us to do. So it's okay to follow. It's okay to follow our leader, to follow the line leader, because that's Jesus. And Jesus loves us and he holds us tightly and he makes sure and he tells us that everything is going to be okay. We might not always like what Jesus has to tell us, but we know that Jesus will not let us down. That Jesus dies for us and rises for us. And that makes all the difference. So, yes, it's good to be line leader in class. But when we come to church, when we come to Sunday school, when we live our life, we know that we follow Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who tells us that you are loved and you are enough. And that nothing can separate us from God's love. And that's so important. That's the message to follow and to share with everybody. Because doesn't everybody want that? Everybody needs that love. I, for one, am so grateful that we get to share that love together on Sunday mornings. And I'm so grateful that we get to spend this time with each other week after week to share in God's love. Friends, let us pray. Hi, God. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our line leader so that we might follow him and all the ways of love he shows us. We pray everything in his name. Amen. Friends, it is so good to see you again this week. Thank you for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'm going away for the weekend, but I look forward to seeing you back online at this time next week. Take good care. Bye-bye.